I threw this bowl the other day and I want to trim it. First of all, I always trim on a board. I don't like to trim on the metal wheel head. I'm not going to trim it and leave it on this board, but it's easier to move it around on the board than on the metal. The metal either grabs or lets go. You try to move it just a little bit on the metal and it won't move, won't move, won't move, then moves an inch. So I prefer to work on the board. I'm going to turn it upside down just to make sure it's round. Often if I, when I'm taking it off the hump, I can make it oval shape. This will flatten it out, make it round. I want to, first of all, I'm going to compact the bottom now. I couldn't do that when I was throwing because, as I said, all the energy just goes into the hump of the clay. I'm going to make some circles. I can tell if it's centered. Put it on there where it's mostly centered, kind of centered. And I'm just going to compact the bottom now. You've got quite a bit of clay to work with there. Remember when I was throwing it, I used that clothespin and made that whole width of the clothespin. So I've got quite a bit of clay. Uh-oh, i got an air bubble in there. To fire the wedger, please. See, I just left it in there, so if you had an air bubble in there, you'd know what to do. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, there's a little air bubble in there. I'm gonna, I just popped it. Now I'm able to compact that bottom. And if it's got any bumpy bits or uneven marks, you don't want to be dragging your spoon across an uneven bottom. Now I'm going to start to trim. I'm going to turn it upside down and center it this way. Now often if things are thrown off the hump, they're not completely round. That doesn't matter. You're only going to center the area that you trim. I'm going to spin it around. We've talked about trimming on line before. The mark that is furthest away from center, uh, where it's furthest away from center, it'll make a mark. And again, depending on how uneven your bowl is, don't worry about this stuff down here because you're not trimming that stuff down there. You're only trimming the stuff at the top or the bottom, depending on how you look at it. And then push. There we go. Now I can trim. I like this trimming tool. We all have our preferences. I've just used this little shape a trimming tool since I've made pots. I'm going to hold it in my hand at an angle and just hold my fingers around it this way and then I have control with my index finger. I'm going to join my hand, my left hand on the pot, my, right, my left thumb on my other hand, and I'm leaning on my leg. I am a triangle of strength. And also as I apply pressure to this, I'm pushing down on this finger with the same amount of pressure as I'm using to trim with, and it holds it down. You notice the only thing I used to hold this down was the wet board. I want to make a foot on this, so I'm going to cut it straight down. Now I purposely, when I throw, leave a lot of clay there, so when I take it off, the bowl is not altered, and I have a lot of clay to work with for a foot. I like it to be tidy in the middle. I'm just going to put my tool on there and trimming is very pretty straightforward we just cut the clay away keeping in mind you have a finite amount of clay here I've got quite a bit so I can make a nice foot I like to have a tidy foot on the bottom I think your pot should look as tidy on the bottom as it does on the top I'm going to give this foot some angle or some interest just a different shape basically trimmed. I like to leave that one. It gives it a, a nice look. But when I'm glazing, I like to turn bowls upside down and glaze the top. If I can, I can, my fingers on there and I've got a hold of it. You can trim down. And now you've got it sealed. 
Oh, you know, you've got, now you've got the clay open. You want to run your sponge over it and bring out those small, small particles and seal it. And very gently just push it away from me. It will release. And now I've got a messy top where it touched the wheel. You have those lines we made in the, at first in the middle. You can mostly center this guy and now you can sponge it and make it tidy. It's not completely centered. Yeah, it's good enough. You make sure that's a nice edge. Now this is a nice trick that I use. I used to use a leather chamois all the time for making things tidy. And now I always would get lost in the reclaim and show up in a bowl somewhere later. I find this is just a piece of plastic, just, a, just whatever you cover your leftovers with. And I'm going to use that and it makes a nice uh, edge. This is a nice edge to, it just is not rough. Your glazes won't um, crack on it. If it does come up to someone's mouth, it's smooth. So there we are, is the trim bowl. It's tidy top and bottom, its edges are smooth. I'm going to put it over on the board right side up. Now these bowls like to crack on the bottom. As soon as you can get your bowls upside down, turn them over. They're, they're too soft now. And let them dry slowly upside down and you'll re it will eliminate some of the cracking with the compressing and the upside down drying. And a smile from the drying gods. <laughs> They'll be fine. So there you go. So again, I made, uh, was it eight bowls the other day? So like throwing them, rinse and repeat.